fat people. Over 40% of America is obese, putting almost one of every two Americans at extreme risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, cancer, and death. But I wondered why are Americans getting so fat? So I drove to McAllen, Texas, the fattest city in America, six years in a row, to see if I could find any answers. But first, I needed some breakfast. What a burger. What do people usually get for breakfast here? Uh, number 21. Okay. So people usually get this for breakfast. Yeah, it's very popular. 980 calories. Really? Yeah. All right, McDonald's breakfast. Yeah, the guy in front of us is a pretty big dude. What did the last guy get? I'll get whatever he got. You got a bacon and cheese. Thank you. <laughs> calories in this meal? It's probably a thousand. Breakfast number three. Menu's looking fattening. I like to try the lot of breakfast. Is that what a lot of people get? Yeah. All right, breakfast for real. After scarfing down a fattening thousand calorie plus breakfast an average American might eat on their way to work, I wondered if the local restaurants here were any healthier. What do people typically get here for breakfast? Dave's, Dave's breakfast. Two eggs. Dave's pancakes. breakfast? Yo quiero uno, por favor. Syrup. Ah. Pancakes? Si, sí, un poquito. Si, yeah. si. Sí, sí. It's a big old breakfast. Mmm, my god. It's like a fried bomb of goodness. We got pancakes, sausage, bacon, eggs, this and that. My guess is probably 3,000 calories right here. Bro, straight up caramel. <laughs> That's wild. With the local restaurant's breakfast here no better than the fast food, I went to the nearby mall to ask the locals here why all the food down here is so fattening, but I found this instead. I'm not sure who's renting these, but you have giant scooters. So you gotta be lazy as hell to not even walk. All right, I'm renting one. I cannot believe this is real. Let's interview the locals. Do a lot of people rent these scoozers at the mall? Yeah. Yeah? Is this like a McAllen specific thing? Uh, yeah. I, I do feel like Nikocado Avocado right now, I'll be honest. Cruising on a scoozer built to help morbidly obese people move around the mall. I thought I was in Wally for a second. But the question was, do you know why McAllen's the obesity capital? Uh, the food. Okay. And they don't walk. Why are people so big? Uh, people like to eat junk food, like chips or McDonald's and all that stuff. Okay. And then? out of nowhere I met this guy. Hey buddy, what are you talking about? Yo? Yeah, do you have any thoughts? Yeah. Uh, Alright, let's hear it. What's your name? David. David, how you doing yeah. David? Good, I'm a children's book author actually. Okay, tell me about it. What's going on? Can I have a good report? Uh, un momento, por favor. It's to help the nation. You wanna go outside? Yeah, man. You wanna hop on here? All right, tell me about yourself. What's going on? So yeah, I lost a brother and sister to diabetes. Okay. And so, you know, I got diagnosed with type two diabetes as well. And so that inspired me to write a children's book okay. that encourages kids to eat healthy and exercise. The book is called The Adventures of Exo and Sai, like exercise. I like that. And uh, so Exo and Sai live in a town called OB City, like obesity, where the mayor is Diane Beatties or diabetes. I'm trying to do my part to get people to change the way they eat. Do you have any places maybe you could show us around here, yeah. McAllen? Of course, yeah. yeah? I'd love to. Yeah, you're a blessing. <laughs> no, you guys seriously are a blessing, man. Right on. So David agreed to show me some of the reasons and places making the people of McAllen so fat. Okay, so from birth to adulthood, why are people getting fat out here? It's the food, it's the Mexican culture. It's like at the start of every good Mexican dish is a good handful of lard. I'm not I'm not sure. joking with that. Yes. Refried beans, rice, tortillas. But then you got that mentality where, you know, you have to finish everything on your plate. Yeah. This is, see, see right here, this is, you can see all those pastries right there. And we got a ton of pastries here. Yeah. This is a diabetes speed run, right? Oh yeah. Look at that right there. This place truly is obese, obese. Like uh, over 40% of the population down here in the Rio Grande Valley is either diabetic or pre-diabetic. Look at that. Let's see the tacos here. Let's this see the tacos. Something someone might eat for lunch here. Oh uh, yeah. Look at the calories. God damn. How you doing? Just asking. Yes. What's up? <laughs> oh, we're filming a documentary about obesity in America, and we're showcasing the tacos here as a prime facilitator of obesity and in turn premature death. But we'll be quick. Uh, the beef fajita taco has close to a thousand calories right there. Got it. Made it to a panaderia. Panaderia, they just serve a lot of uh, Mexican uh, bakery goods. And you'll they... notice one thing too, no calorie count out here. EBT is a snap also, so you can imagine, you know, the government's allowing people to come and use food stamps they to come and- They accept EBT here. Yeah. The government is funding diabetes and obesity. Are you ordering here? Um, what are you getting? Concha, two conchas. Tenemos un investigación diabetes in Michale. Diabetes, but I, I Tú tienes diabetes? My daughter and my grandson sí. want concha there. Sí. She has diabetes and she's buying the product. Yeah, she's buying, she's buying it, I think, for her daughter, her granddaughter. Yeah. I doubt it. She's probably gonna have a snack of that too, right? Yeah, maybe. Where should we head to next? Maybe a taqueria? Okay. Vamos! For a papa taco. Every variation of taco imaginable. I'll try one un birria. Gracias. All right. Exceso calorias, exceso azucares. Yeah, that's nice. Ah, that hits. Big old bite. Yep. Ah. 
I gotta say, I am mind blown because it's so tasty, but I know for a fact this is like thousand calorie nuke. And after experiencing this fattening food firsthand, David invited me to his house to show me the reason he's so passionate about all this. But as an experiment, I wanted to see if I could snag food at the drive through in less than 60 seconds on my way over there, proving that fast food is too easy to get your hands on, thus making America fat. Just to show you how dangerously quick fast food is, I want to see if I can get my fast food order before I share with you this video's sponsor, Great Shadow Legends. Hello. Can I get one McDouble, please? That'll be it. The free-to-play mobile game with over 80 million downloads, insane graphics, over 650 champions to collect, epic boss battles, and it's Raid's fourth birthday. Hello. Thank you. Me and my favorite champion, Gallic, have been through a lot since I downloaded Raid almost four years ago. Orcs are my favorite faction by far. Appreciate it. And ever since, Raid has gotten bigger and better, adding more and more features like live arena PvP, one of my favorites. So, if you haven't joined raid yet click the link in the description or scan the qr code here to get epic bonuses like talia the champion and other in-game loot thank you so much we got the order thank you click the link in the description to download raid now i got my order in almost one minute ridiculously fast and way too convenient thus leading to a nation full of obese people after proving food is too accessible in america i had made it to david's house so he could show me why he's so passionate about destroying obesity started uh, doing it for these two people right here that's my my brother and sister uh, Mary and Henry who, who passed away yeah. from diabetes so um, I don't want anybody to have to go through what my family's had to go through losing yeah. a brother and a sister having another sister go blind it, it's a really tough thing to see with the people that you love most eat healthy exercise and and good things are gonna happen okay America has hope America does have hope after seeing obesity kill David's family I flew to Florida to meet a guy named Mark who was on TLC's my 600 pound life and weighed over 700 pounds at the end of the show he lost 200 pounds and the doctor told him the only only way he could lose more weight was to get a stomach reduction surgery. We're in Orlando, Florida. We're meeting up with Mark. See what a day in his life looks like. Right now he's 487 pounds. We're gonna see what got him here and what advice he might have for others. Yeah, how you doing? So your name's Mark. Mark, yes sir. You were on the show, My 600 Pound Life on TLC. Right. You lose 184 pounds, you go to the doctor and he says, hey, now you're at the point where we want you to do the weight reduction surgery, right? Yeah, I did everything a doctor asked. I lost weight. And he's like, okay, cool. You're approved for surgery. It's like, well, hold up. I'm kind of feeling this right now. Let me, let me do this. He's like, okay, we'll go again. Go lose another 50 pounds. And I lost like 40 pounds, you know? It's like, okay, cool. Great job. Let's go get, let's get you in the surgery. And the surgery is a stomach reduction surgery? Yeah, they cut your stomach. Okay. He said, I have a 5% chance with the surgery and a 0% chance with Without. Okay. And I knew that my work ethic alone is going to eliminate that 5% gap. So sure. You. When did the weight get put on? The pandemic broke me. Okay. And this is where everything goes to shit. This is it, man. Okay. Let's walk through. That's cool. You lose your job and you're gaining a bunch of weight. Okay. My life consisted of here to there, to the bathroom, to my chair, out here, to the front door. Are you just locked in here depressed? I'm pretty much just locked in here depressed. This is my world. For me to go all the way, all the way to the other side of this little baby pool right Yeah. Here, killed me. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So this is the graveyard of bad memories right here. This couch. This is where life was for a long time. Yeah, I used to be an athlete, man. Yeah. Like, I could do the splits now. Can I see? God damn. But I wanted to understand how Mark got to 700 pounds in the first place. Can we pull up DoorDash? This is the COVID depression menu. We got McDonald's, 7-Eleven, McDonald's. McDonald's. Two sausage biscuit, two sausage McMuffin, sure. hash brown, Dr. Pepper, that's f***ing breakfast. Wendy's, Baconator, then a Baconator combo. You get, the you get two of them. Little Caesars, pizza. And this is all on the same day. Yeah. As soon so as they contacted the me back, I was like, all right, it's it's time to go to work. Got it. Going to work at the time was literally me. One. Basically, Mark is saying that when my 600 pound life asked him to be on the show, he knew he had to get healthy or he was gonna die. Dude, I get up and I put on my shoes, socks, head out the door, I go to the gym. See, this is my breakfast right here. I'm not trying to lose 50 pounds to look good on a vacation. I'm fighting for my life. You tell somebody laying in a hospital bed that if you work hard, you're determined, and you stay consistent, you can change your life. I guarantee you every single person would stand up and fight to do that. So I went to the gym with Mark to experience an average day in his fight to become healthy again. Drove by eight times, took me the ninth time to come in. I feel you, man. Kicked. Quite the other day at the office. Let's go, Mark. 
through this. Oh, oh, yeah. Holy. I'm gonna pass it. Gassed after Mark's workout, I had a lot more sympathy for what he goes through on a daily basis. And as Mark and I drove back to his parents' house, Mark did something he thought he'd never be able to do again. Oh, oh. What's up? I don't think. Oh, seatbelt? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna fit on me, though. Six minute drive. Okay. Oh, I haven't worn a seatbelt in years, bro. Listen, actually? For real, yeah. yeah. Right. For real. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Kind of feel almost normal. Hell yeah! Man. Don't give up, man. With the click of Mark's seatbelt echoing in my ears, I realized that if a 700-pound man can turn his life around, then so can America.